New mothers often find their feelings towards dogs change drastically. This is a universal phenomenon. It's very, very common. This happened to me when I was pregnant. We had a dog. I loved that dog for years. When I became pregnant and my feelings for the dog began to change, I didn't understand what was going on. So I went online and I searched the internet to see if any other women were having a similar experience. To my astonishment, I found there are scores of women who are experiencing this exact same phenomenon. It appears millions of women are going through this. There's actually a term for it. They call it pet annoyance. I Hate Dogs on YouTube made a video about it called The Instinct to Hate Dogs. Please check it out if you haven't already. On pregnancy forums, you can read story after story of women who are having my exact same experience. They went from loving dogs to loathing dogs, absolutely despising their dogs. It was nice to know I was not alone in my experience, but what really bothers me are the comments from dog lovers who shame these women and try to make them feel guilty for having feelings they can't control. These new mothers are desperately wanting to get rid of their dogs, but they are being attacked, bullied, and shamed by people online and in real life and sometimes by their own families and spouses, into keeping their dogs. People call them heartless, cold, and inhuman for wanting to give their dogs away. What happens is these women usually end up keeping the dog against their wishes. I think this is outrageous and appalling, and it needs to stop. Thank goodness my husband was supportive. We got rid of our dog, and we never looked back. We have zero regrets. After years of loving dogs, suddenly everything about the dog begins to irritate these new mothers to such a degree that they feel the dog is driving them crazy. It's not just an aversion to the dog's smell. Pregnancy causes a woman to have a heightened sense of smell, and she often experiences an aversion to certain odors and foods, but this is much more than that. From the way the dog smells, to the dog's appearance, to the sounds it makes, to the way it behaves, Absolutely everything about the dog begins to repulse these women. They begin to intensely despise the dog and want nothing to do with it. They feel they want to get rid of the dog, and this feeling is urgent. The feelings of hatred are very strong. Why some women experience this and others do not is a mystery to me. I have a theory about it, which I will discuss in a future video. But basically, I think instinct kicks in for some women while for other women, it doesn't. I think this might be due to an as yet unidentified pathogen that affects the brain. In any case, it's something that many, possibly millions of women are experiencing, and we need to talk about it. I found an article I want to share with you. It's called, When New Parents Start Hating Their Pets. The link is in the description. It talks about Penny Scott Fox, who wrote a book on this subject called and Baby Makes Four, a trimester-by-trimester trimester guide to a baby-friendly dog. Scott Fox is a British-born single mum, dog trainer, and canine behavior expert. She wrote this book because she was appalled at the growing number of new parents giving up their pets. She believes new parents are giving up their dogs unnecessarily, and that the reason they are experiencing this newfound aversion to their dogs is because of something they have done wrong, she believes it's the parents' problem and that they need to fix it. And she tries to get them to fix it so that they won't get rid of their dogs. The book is, quote, an exercise in reprogramming how the humans in the family see and interact with their animals, end quote. So she puts the blame on the parents, guilting parents, because now the responsibility is on them to overcome this aversion. And if they can't get over their aversion, it means they must have done something wrong. They didn't try hard enough, or they didn't follow her instructions properly, and they failed somehow. This enrages me. The article suggests many new dog owners turn their pets into substitute children or practice babies instead of letting them be what they are, dogs. That the picture they have in their minds of who and what their dogs are is wrong, and that's the real cause of both their dog's behavior problems and the cycle of resentment, anger, and blame that leads to them hating their dogs. The author is quoted as saying, I think that people mollycoddle their dogs too much, she said bluntly. 
Quote, that's why when the baby comes, things go wrong. End quote. Molly coddle means to overparent or treat someone in an indulgent or overprotective way. Well, I can tell you that our dog was most definitely not Molly coddled. I never considered the dog to be my child, not by a long shot. It was a dog. I'd already had two children, and for me, there was no confusion at all as to who was more important. If anything, I felt slightly bad for the dog because it needed more attention from me than I could give it. But the author of the book thinks the problem arises from, quote, pet parents treating their dogs like humans, like little humans, and that if they let their dogs be dogs, everything will be fine. Well, I was never a pet parent. Even when I had a dog, I hated the term pet parent. My dog was a dog. The article says, quote, many parents react to perfectly normal, harmless canine behavior, even simple curiosity about the new baby, as a dangerous sign of aggression, end quote. It's interesting because looking back, I should have been more concerned for my children's safety around that dog than I was. And today I feel guilty about that. At the time we did our research, we chose a breed that was supposedly great with kids, a breed that was known for its non-aggression. We did not choose a breed that was bred for blood sports. We did not choose a dog that was bred to attack unprovoked and kill. Even back then, I had the sense not to get a monster like that. But still, the dog had fangs and was a dog. And all dogs can bite. So I still feel ashamed I had a dog around my kids. At the time, though, I actually wasn't afraid at all that the dog would injure my baby. Like most dog owners, I trusted the dog implicitly and believed it would never harm my children. So the author's theory that I was responding with fear to perfectly normal canine behavior doesn't apply. In the article, it says, quote, Other parents come completely unhinged when their pets expect or even demand the very things they've been trained by their owners to expect, like constant attention or immediate response to a desire for food, play, or a walk. In her book, Scott Fox recommends simple steps to change the dog's expectations and behavior, but she also thinks human expectations need to change. End quote. The things that drove me crazy about the dog were not behaviors we trained her to have. They were natural dog behaviors that every dog has, despite its training. For example, the licking. It didn't always bother me, but after I got pregnant, the sound of the dog licking itself would fill me with rage. You can read about a lot of women having the same experience. The slurping sounds it would make while licking its genitals and anus drove me bananas. I couldn't stand it. I'd have to go into another room. The clickety-clack of her nails on the floor drove me insane. The way she would stare at me. Her eyes were always on me, watching my every move. I suddenly found this to be incredibly irritating. I would want to shout at her to quit staring at me. Ugh, the way she smelled. It was revolting. It made me nauseous. My husband would bathe her regularly, but even immediately after her bath, I could still smell that musty dog smell, and I could not tolerate it. The sound of her panting, feeling her hot breath on me. Get that away from me. Man, I couldn't stand it. Just the way she looked, I hated her dumb, empty, soulless eyes. They just looked so stupid and so empty, like the dog was just... A collection of neurons firing, a package of animated meat programmed with instincts to survive, but there was nothing behind it, no soul, no intelligence, just a stinking sack of hair, an animated meat. The hair, oh, the hair drove me absolutely crazy. Finding hair all over my house, under the dinner table, on my counter in the kitchen, on my clothes on the furniture, everywhere. It was a mess. No matter how much I cleaned, I could not get rid of it. I couldn't take it. It was disgusting and I could not bear it. When she would shake herself, I would cringe. And she shook herself so much, all dogs do, but it's like I never noticed it before I got pregnant. All of a sudden, I became so aware of how often she shook herself. And when she would shake herself, I would see all her dander and hairs go flying everywhere. And my stomach would tighten up into a knot. 
and my heart would beat faster and I would clench my fists and I would feel anxiety wash over me because I knew all that hair and dander was contaminating everything in my house and I couldn't stand it. And also the slobber. The slobber would go flying out of her jowls whenever she would shake and it would land on everything, also contaminating everything. I became aware of the fact that my entire home was covered in dander, hair, and slobber, and there was nothing I could do about it. No amount of cleaning could fix this. And the shit, I knew that she was covered in traces of shit and piss that I could not see, but how could she not be covered in it? She was licking her anus and genitals many times a day, and then licking all over her body with the same tongue that was just up her anus. I knew she was spreading traces of feces all over her body, and it was just too much. I couldn't handle it. And then she would lie down and spread all those traces of shit and piss all over our house, all over me and my kids. I didn't want to touch her anymore. I didn't want my kids to touch her. I realized she doesn't wear underwear, and she should. Every time a dog sits down, it plants its exposed, dirty anus down on whatever it is sitting on, placing traces of shit everywhere. The way the dog was always trying to lick me drove me nuts with that dirty tongue that touches all sorts of filthy things. She loved to eat poop, especially cat poop, which she would find in our yard because neighborhood cats love to come shit in our yard. And then she would vomit it up when she'd come back into the house. And then she would proceed to eat the shitty vomit. I couldn't handle any of this. My levels of disgust and revulsion were through the roof. It wouldn't matter how the dog was trained. All dogs do these things. They are all filthy and disgusting. It's just that I hadn't really seen it before. It's as though I was seeing dogs for what they are. For the first time, I was actually seeing them for what they are. Like a veil was lifted or my rose-colored glasses came off. I saw the reality of how gross all dogs are. Then the author goes on to admit she is actually manipulating the reader. She said, and I quote, I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag and say, I'm just manipulating you to do this so that you don't have a meltdown and throw your dog out of the house. But actually, that's what I'm trying to do, end quote. So there you go. Why would she feel a need to manipulate people? Manipulation involves unscrupulous, unfair, clever control over someone, and people don't manipulate unless it's to their own advantage. What does the author get out of manipulating her readers? Well, check out my video called The Dog Cult, where I talk about how the end justifies the means. People in this dog cult believe they have an important mission to save dogs, and they will lie and deceive anyone they can as they go about their work trying to rescue dogs. They believe it's fine to do this. The author admits it herself. The article ends by encouraging readers to pick up a copy of the book, and it says, quote, don't get trapped in the guilt, resentment, hatred cycle that ends up with the dog in the garage or the shelter, and the parents on the internet explaining that they had no choice, end quote. Well, what we need to stop is not the way pregnant women or new parents respond to their dogs, because you can't change that. What needs to change is the way we judge new parents who have this completely natural reaction to their dogs. We need to quit making them feel guilty for something they cannot control. Nature has evidently designed pregnant women to have this reaction to dogs. We can't help it. This aversion to dogs which new parents experience exists for a reason. It is there to protect the newborn. Nature designed new parents to have an aversion to dogs so that they would rid their environment of the dog. And there is a very good reason for this. The dog is a source of harmful bacteria which can make the baby sick or even kill the baby. The dog poses a threat by its very nature of being an unpredictable predatory animal with fangs. A woman's body knows this. Nature knows this. That is why women have the instinct to drive dangerous animals out of their territory. It is natural. No other animal on earth tolerates the presence of a threat around their young. Tolerating the presence of a threat is unnatural. It's disgraceful.
and all dogs are a major threat to babies and children. When a woman is expecting a baby, she takes measures to make her home safe for the baby. This is called child-proofing. Child-proofing, also called baby-proofing, is the act of making an environment or object safe for children. This reduces risks to a level considered acceptable by a society, an institution, or to specific parents. It involves fire safety, electrical safety, installing fences to block access to swimming pools, putting medicine and chemicals in places that are out of reach, and so forth. The goal is to reduce or eliminate risk. We try to make the home environment safe for babies and children. Getting rid of the family dog should be included in this list of measures we take to make a home safe for children. While it's true that more children die from drowning and poisoning every year, the fact that children are being disfigured and dying from dog attacks cannot go ignored. 20 to 50 people are killed by dogs every year in the United States alone, and about half of those are children. While there are 4.7 million reported dog bites every year in the USA, many more, perhaps millions more, go unreported, and 800,000 of those reported bites are serious enough to require medical attention. 28,000 people undergo reconstructive surgery every year in the USA due to dog attacks, and about half of all these numbers are children under the age of 12. This is a travesty, and this needs to be taken seriously. Dogs pose a serious threat to our babies. There are reports of infants being attacked and killed in their cribs as they slept by well-trained family dogs that were raised with love and never mistreated. These dogs had no history of aggression. The owners are almost always shocked and never saw it coming, saying the dog was always very sweet with the baby. These dogs will wait until you leave the room or are asleep to attack your baby. They do this because they view babies and children as competition for food. They are trying to eliminate the competition for food. This is instinctual behavior, which cannot be trained or loved out of a dog. Not all dogs will attack children, but it's a game of Russian roulette, and you never know which dog is going to snap. 50% of children will have suffered a dog bite before their 12th birthday. This is an outrage. Dog lovers say it's fine to have a dog in the home as long as you never leave a child alone with it and watch its body language for signs it might attack. I don't know if any of you are parents, but as a parent, I can tell you, I don't have the time to watch a dog 24-7. Who can possibly monitor a dog constantly and not take their eyes off it for even a second? When there are dishes to do, meals to prepare, laundry to wash and fold, vacuuming to do, floors to mop, shelves to dust, toilets and sinks to scrub, you get the picture. As a parent, your days are so full, it's impossible to keep your eyes on a dog constantly. This is a ridiculous expectation people have. Instead of being chastised or berated for getting rid of the family dog, women should be praised. They should be honored. They should be given awards, awards for parenting excellence. They should be given cash incentives to get rid of their dogs or gift cards. Our governments should be rewarding parents financially for getting rid of their dogs. But our leaders don't care about us. They don't care about our children. They seem to only care about money, including the money that is made off gullible people who choose to own dogs, which are a huge expense. Think of how much money is made, not only through the sale of pet food, pet products and services, veterinary services and so forth. This totals $70 billion per year in America alone. But also consider the amount of money made providing emergency medical care and reconstructive surgery to dog bite victims. See my video about the $70 billion per year pet industry. Do you think our government is interested in putting an end to that industry? Do you think our leaders, those who have power, are interested in seeing an end to this industry? I don't think so. But in an ideal world where our leaders truly care about us, they would encourage families to get rid of their dogs, or better yet, they would place a full ban on dog ownership. 
We cannot rely on our governments to protect us or our children. It's up to us to inform ourselves and stand firm in our convictions and do what we know is right. Despite the social pressures to conform, despite all the advertising and mind control propaganda they bombard us with constantly, that dogs are great, that dogs and kids go hand in hand and make a great pairing. I faced a lot of hate and criticism after I got rid of my dog, but my child's health and safety is more important than my social life. Nothing is more important than keeping my children safe and healthy. If you truly care about your baby, you will likewise eliminate the risk from your environment and get rid of that dog. Listen to your instincts. Our instincts know what is best for our children. There is a reason new mothers are repulsed by dogs. Nature designed us this way to reduce risk to our children and give them the best chance of survival. By getting rid of the dog, you are reducing your baby's risk of not only acquiring serious viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections which are transmitted by dogs, but also of being bitten, seriously injured, disfigured, or killed by the dog. Not only that, but all of the time and energy you spend with the dog should be spent on your child. All the money you spend on the dog should instead be spent on your child. We should be investing all of our resources into our children because children are the future. Without children, there will be no one to uphold society after you retire. Our civilization will collapse. Dogs are not going to run the hospitals, provide you with medical care, fix your plumbing or computers, or provide you food and electricity and all the necessities of life. Children are. They are infinitely more valuable than dogs and as such deserve all of our attention. If you are pregnant or you're a new mother and you're feeling like you hate your dog and you want to get rid of it, do not let anyone make you feel guilty for doing so. Get rid of the thing. Know that you are doing the right thing. Your body is trying to tell you something. Listen to it. Nature knows what is best for our babies. Your natural instinct is screaming at you to get that filthy beast out of the house. Do it. While some might think you are heartless, know that there are many of us who will applaud you for listening to your motherly instincts and putting your child first. Our numbers are growing daily and people are waking up. Soon it will be taboo for parents to own a dog, just as it is now taboo to smoke in front of kids. While not that long ago, smoking was thought to be good for you, and even breastfeeding mothers were encouraged to smoke in the home. Times are changing. We are evolving. And the future is dog-free.